Okay, uh, we'll start on the next part. This time it will be uh, mindfulness of the mind. Uh, actually, the mental states, uh, I will introduce what are the states we are going to use in this meditation. Uh, this again is uh, very similar to uh, what we did for the feelings. Uh, but we need to identify the names uh, for the different mental states. <clears throat> well, uh, some questions are there. Uh, let me look at them. Well, for some reason, one of you could not log on to the model in time, it seems. Well, we will try to uh, do a makeup a quiz or something for such situations, right? Because anyway, the model records the time. So if uh, after studying, if we feel that, okay, you had a problem in the connectivity, we will uh, do a makeup, right? Let's arrange something later. <clears throat> okay. Uh, one more question is there. Okay. <clears throat> right, so we are moving to this third area. So feeling part is uh, fairly simple, you would have noticed by now, except that the unworldly feelings part that I have to introduce a little later. And worldly feelings, it is, uh, they are the ones we did in the meditation. Uh, one more uh, suggestion. Uh, in the last session, there was a power failure and I unexpectedly left the session. Okay, that's fine. Okay, those things happen. Right? But anyway, the recording uh, will be uploaded. So uh, please catch up if you happen to miss uh, any little part due to uh, such power failures or Zoom failures or whatever. Right? Right, uh, so far we were mainly studying the body and the bodily feelings, mental feelings also, of course, we touched to some extent. Well, we know that uh, when you are uh, sitting there uh, as a single unit, uh, you consist of two main parts actually, the mind and the thoughts were on one side, the body, and the bodily uh, functions on the other side. But we know the, uh, they, they, these two sides are tightly coupled, which is nowadays known as mind-body interconnection. Mind-body interconnection, where, which we will uh, study a little bit more later under stress uh, management uh, topic. Uh, but right now I'll introduce the initial part. Uh, in the meantime, one more question is there. Uh, you had some issue in the Zoom name. Uh, okay, uh, so index number was not there. That's that's okay. Next time you can try with the index number. But since the name is there, it is okay, right? Uh, okay, Janit is also asking, yeah, see, similar thing. So in case you could not change the index number, change to the index number, don't worry, right? Because the name is there, we will put the marks that way. Right? But uh, let's try to correct it. And if everyone is in the index number, it will be much easier for the uh, for the lecturers to mark and gear, then, then it will be very neat. Otherwise we'll have to search for each name and mark. Anyway, uh, don't worry, you will not lose marks for that, right? <clears throat> right, coming back, uh, the mind and the body uh, interconnection. I've not fully studied yet, uh, so many unknowns in that area. But uh, to brief you, uh, in a nutshell, well, uh, your brain, uh, is doing a lot of functions we know. And also your mind 
is actually over the brain as well. Its mind is supervising the brain activity as well. Uh, here you notice that the mind is actually continuously listening and attending and taking care of the body. Uh, brain is included when we say body. And using, uh, using the body and the brain for gratification of desires. The mind has a lot of desires, of course, whereas the body, if you take the body in isolation from the mind, the body has no desires at all. It's like a piece of luck. Without the mind uh, driving it, it won't do anything. Right? So it, it has no, uh, no desires of its own. So mind will be like, really using the body uh, in order to get the uh, desires gratified. In return, the body as a system is uh, continuously uh, listening to the commands and responding to the commands and thoughts of the mind, like a slave, like a slave. So that, that is the interconnection. One is like the master, the other is like the slave. When we say the body, remember uh, the brain is included in that definition. Brain is part of the body. And the mind uh, derive meanings. Uh, body can't derive any meaning out of anything. Mind has emotions, body has no emotions. Uh, mind has beliefs, self-image, these mental formations. Mind has instincts and the mind has habits, whereas the body has no habits at all. So all those things uh, are part, in, in medical terms that those parts of the mind have been identified as the psychopath, have been identified as the psychopath. Uh, sorry, I forgot the recording. I uh, know oh it's on, sorry, okay, it's on. Okay, but we see brain doing a lot of work because it is the input-output processor for the mind, providing the interface uh, between the mind and the body, as well as body and the external world. The interface consists of the eyes, ears, and all that with the external world. And uh, when uh, inputs come from the external world, uh, say when you hear something, for example, uh, through the ear, ideas are taken to the mind. And because the body and the mind are interconnected, uh, the mental uh, activity is having an impact on the body, physical body like this. And that impact is coming through this uh, interconnection between the mind and the body. Uh, in medicine, they identify this interconnecting part between the mind and the body uh, divided into three subsystems. Divided into three subsystems. Okay. Uh, namely, one is called, uh, this part is called the psycho part, which is the mind and the mental process. The interface between that mental process and the physical body consists of three subsystems. By name, one subsystem called nervous subsystem, brain, brain playing a major role there. Another subsystem called endocrine subsystem. Another one called immune system. So today there is uh, this area called PNEI, psycho, neuroendocrine, immune system being studied and a lot of research happening there. Later on, there is a topic in our syllabus called uh, stress management, uh, which will be our last lecture. Uh, I will be highlighting a little bit, little bit more on this area right? and this interconnection as well. But right now, right now we are not paying attention to this. We are paying attention to this part 
and trying to identify what are the state changes happening at the psycho level. Because anyway, later it will be having an impact on the body. Now, for example, let me give you an example. Nowadays, because of the pandemic, uh, from the social media and the media generally, you get a lot of messages uh, into your uh, mind. The mind will absorb all that messages and mind, mind will have its own emotions towards what you hear. Sometimes you, you might uh, get fear. Sometimes you might get sorrow, depending on the news item. And uh, those mental processes happen, and then that has an impact on the physical body. Uh, when the mental health is affected, physical health is also affected because of this uh, NEI, NEI uh, interconnection system. So uh, that's the part we are going to study under the stress uh, management area later. Right now, uh, we are trying to look at the psycho part to check whether we can uh, become aware or we can become mindful of the state changes happening at the psycho level or mind level. This is the part we call mindfulness meditations on the mind. Mindfulness meditation on the mind. What we mean by the mind there is not everything in the mind, actually, uh, different mental states of the mind. So we are trying to become aware of the mental states as they occur and as they are at the present moment. I think you already know they occur very fast, much faster than bodily movements. Now for the body, uh, to take one breath, uh, inhale one breath and exhale it, uh, it's a very long time with respect to the, with respect to the state changes that occur, that occur in the mind. So state changes that occur in the body, now we are fairly familiar. For example, body posture divided into four states, sitting, standing, walking and sleeping states, so those state changes or posture changes, we know how to be mindful about now. But we know those state changes are very slow. They are happening very slowly. So it's easy for the mind to uh, become aware. But mental state changes happen so rapidly and that needs a lot of uh, training and practice uh, to identify the mental state changes as as and when they happen at the present moment. Uh, so we will be trying to undergo that kind of training uh, in this uh, part of the meditation. If I give you a simile, uh, look at this scenario. It's a particular place on earth and it's uh, good weather right now. Good weather right now, so you can see uh, a lot of details there. But the state of the weather, state of the weather can change, isn't it? Like the state of the mind can change, same way uh, the state of the weather uh, is not fixed. So if, I, if the same place under a different weather condition is observed, it's like this. Looks like uh, some details uh, uh, have changed. And in rain, uh, when, when rain uh, take place, under rainy weather, this is how you see the same place. So same way, it is the same mind that you are going to see under different conditions, different mental states happening. Here the, in this example, uh, state changes are whether weather pattern changes. Right? So whether you know can be misty. Right? So same place can be observed under misty conditions like this. Uh, okay, uh, evening. Okay, getting darker. Same place. And uh, 
the twilight and uh, of course night with rain but i'm trying to show is that uh, there are different states of the weather that take place and if you recognize what is the state now so you know it is rainy weather now you know it is very sunny now you know it is uh, twilight now you know it is the dawn now likewise the mind can identify uh, the the state of that uh, geographical place geographical scenario can you see the similarity this is what we are going to do with the mind inside the mind also okay so general guidelines are then we have to capture the present mental state present mental state and like earlier we have to be very neutral in doing that detaching from the emotions not liking that mental state or not disliking that mental state but just noting that okay this is the mental state right now then it's not only our own mental state that we are going to think of of course the own one is direct inside because you can uh, you can feel it using that as a evidence uh, you use inferential uh, understanding of the mental states of the other minds other people other living beings you use your experience as evidence to understand that all other minds right at this moment are having their own uh, mental state so mental state is a, a omnipresent uh, phenomena in all all minds that understanding is here internal plus external so rather than identifying my own and someone else's own uh, mental state here you identify in this level these are all mental states mental states are natural phenomena that is what you are going to understand there then uh, contemplation state 1 so up to this point it's bare mindfulness after that you will move on to uh, contemplation of uh, arising and passing away okay uh, before we move into that level let me introduce the names of uh, different mental states we use in meditation of course mind is a state machine which has large number of states but we will uh, identify the major states for the purpose of meditation to make it fairly simple okay at the at the first place we divide the mental state into two main categories ordinary uh, mental states and higher states ordinary mental states and higher states higher states are when you develop the mind on meditation uh, mental formations so higher states may not uh, be experienced by everybody but many meditators experience that with practice ordinary states everyone everyone experience uh, during their daily activities let's look at the names uh, ordinary states first uh, we name one uh, state of the mind as a hostile state hostile means uh, the mind is uh, burdened with the aversion aversive thoughts and therefore uh, attitude is hostile at that time right? you want to fight with something that kind of attitude right okay uh, exact opposite of that uh, sorry it is not the exact opposite uh, let me this one the last full state is that you are attracted to something attracted to uh, maybe beautiful colors uh, pleasing sounds uh, taste and uh, smell or the physical touch when you are attached to them 
seeking for them we call it the lustful state of the mind it's driven by sensual desires driven by sensual desires which is the opposite of hostile state hostile state is uh, about thinking about uh, what you dislike lustful state is thinking of uh, what you like then uh, other three these other three are uh, neutral states where the mind is neither moving to the aversion side no moving to the uh, sensual desire side but it's more neutral on those two uh, but in that neutral mind also you notice sometimes the mind is uh, feeling uh, inactive lethargic uh, lazy to think right? even the thought process is slowing down now you know what happens in when you sit in a lecture for a for one hour or two well right now you may be feeling that in this lecture also that state we call contracted mind contracted mind is mind is lazy thought process is weak uh, you can take a uh, thought strongly and uh, laziness uh, in the thought process the exact opposite of that is the mind is neither lustful or hostile the two extremes are avoided it's neutral but however these neutral thoughts are continuously switching from one to another one to another too many thoughts which is called hyperactive mind hyperactive mind that state we call distracted distracted mind is distracted by uh, switching between too many thoughts in a short time then deluded means mind is again neutral it's neither contracted nor distracted uh, it's in the middle state but however uh, it's deluded because the mind is unaware of its own state and the causes that gave rise to the a uh, deluded state so deluded means neutral mind without uh, knowing the causes causes for it right so i hope uh, the five states are clear out of the five two main, three main states actually hostile state on one side lustful state on the other side deluded state is in the middle then deluded state can be enhanced by distracted state uh, can be contracted uh, by this other state sleepy state so three main levels lustful on to one side hostile on to the other side deluded in the middle and in the deluded state also there will be overdrive too much thinking that is called the distracted state underdrive uh, too less thinking which is called the contracted state now these are no strange states to us isn't it because from uh, if you look at today from the very morning you uh, from the very moment you got up in the morning up to now i think your mind has gone through all this five at different times of course maybe because it happened too quickly and maybe the mind is not trained to identify you would not have seen it happening you would not have uh, observed it switching between the states so it's a very fast state machine actually the fastest state, state machine in the world and uh, therefore we might not be able to identify each and every tiny uh, time moments that may not be required even a certain period of time if you can identify which of these states dominated during that period that would be enough for you to uh, start this meditation anything not clear about this five please ask by voice right now Okay, so what is your mind state now?
I hope it is not in the contracted state. Okay. okay uh, so I, I'm just trying to create awareness of your own mental state to your mind. Right? Okay, so those five are the ordinary states. Now you know the names. So our job uh, during the meditation is to categorize, identify and categorize. What is the state at this moment? So one might think that you need to catch each and every tiny uh, time slot. Not necessarily. Right? Over a period of time, you can summarize what was the state during that period? What was the state dominant during that period? That will be good enough for you to start practicing. Okay, so, namely then hostile, deluded, distracted, contracted, and lustful. Of these hostile and lustful states go against each other. One is uh, attracting, other is repelling, like. Then a contracted and distracted goes, goes again against each other. Contracted means underdrive, distracted means overdrive in the mind, thinking process. Deluded is the exact middle uh, point, right? so exact middle state. Okay, then, uh, there are state uh, transitions happening, like uh, the body posture transitions happening. We monitored in that uh, posture meditation. Same way here, state transitions in the mental states, uh, we will be able to monitor once we practice this. So if transitions happen, uh, just to give you an example, uh, the mind may feel hostile over a certain period of time, then uh, you might next switch to uh, deluded. It can switch to anything, anything else, but in this example, I'm assuming, okay, hostile mind was there, it was prevailing, and uh, now it is not there, it's back in the neutral deluded state. And then, a uh, moment later, you might feel the mind got distracted because uh, some other input came, uh, multiple inputs are coming. So uh, mind is now in the overdrive, too many thoughts in too short time. Uh, then uh, mind might switch to a lustful state when an input comes from ear, nose, throat, uh, ear, nose, tongue, and uh, body, uh, well, five senses. Suddenly the mind might switch to go after them decide to go after them uh, to gratify the desires. And then it is a lustful state and that might prevail for a time, for a period of time. And then switch to something else like this. Okay, so uh, this is, uh, I think you have st studied the state machines enough. So you know the theory of state states and the state transitions and the trigger uh, for each transition are the causes. So that's the whole theory of all this mindfulness meditation is, is uh, identifying the states of something, which we call phenomena, then identifying the transitions arising and passing away, and then identifying the causes, the, the excitation given for that transition. In engineering words, you have in a state machine, you have states, then you have a state transition, then you have the excitation. So this whole mindfulness uh, theory is completely on that. Identifying states and monitoring the state transitions right now, right at the moment while it's happening. That's the idea. Okay. Let me introduce the, uh, the higher states. Hope ordinary uh, five states are now clear. Uh, unless you have any questions on them ordinary states, uh, let me give you the names of the higher states. Uh, these higher states are associated with what we discussed in the previous meditation as unworldly feelings. Right? When the mind uh, is uh, 
shifting jiva from a ordinary state to a higher state through meditation, suddenly you will find unworldly, pleasant feelings start dominating within the mind. The very first of that unworldly pleasant feeling is happening when the mind is in this state, known as a great state. There are four, a great mind, great state of the mind, unsurpassable state of the mind, concentrated state of the mind, and the liberated state of the mind. So uh, when the mind is uh, switching gear from ordinary to higher states, the very first one you will reach is this, the great state, then unsurpassable, then contracted. Then with the, uh, with the wisdom meditations, the vipassana, uh, the mind can be uh, lifted up to uh, liberated states. Okay, so two main kinds. So altogether, if I put all the states, hostile, deluded, distracted or contracted, lustful, these are the four uh, ordinary states here. I am putting contracted and uh, distracted together because, uh, because uh, Theoretically, in these meditations, uh, they are identified as one state, okay? two, uh, two sides of the coin like. Okay? And then, uh, sorry, higher states, you have the great, unsurpassable, concentrated and liberated, these four, some explanation on these four will come when we go move to our next topic from mindfulness to concentration. There we can talk about these four. But at the moment you can remember that your mind is capable of switching between these eight states. Your mind is capable of uh, taking any of the eight states with sufficient practice, of course. These four are, are coming with a certain training, certain practice. Other four, I don't, I don't think you don't need any other, any more practice because you have been practicing it all the time. Maybe some of these might have become even habits, but some of these may not have become habits yet because you might not have practiced them, them enough. Some of you might not have experienced any one of these four. So, but anyway, the mind is capable. It's just the devotion or the perseverance required to explore uh, those states. So in this meditation, you are like a doctor, uh, doctor uh, using stethoscope to uh, check the physical condition of uh, the blood, uh, blood uh, beating. Same way, in this meditation, you are a doctor, you act like a doctor, neutrally observing, what is the state? What is the state of the mind there? So stethoscope is uh, equivalent to uh, your ability here, uh, which, is, which is the mindfulness meditation itself is a stethoscope. You use that to identify uh, which state is here right now and uh, how is it arising? Uh, how is it passing away? How is the next state arising? How is it passing away? What are the causes for each state? For example, I already gave you some causes for the mind to become hostile state, isn't it? What could be the cause? You are thinking of any, uh, you, are, uh, you are encountering a mental formation that you dislike. When you encounter uh, something you dislike in mental formation, the mind is uh, driven to hostile state. So immediate uh, cause is the mental contact, mental or physical contact, driven by evolution, driven by uh, those driving mental factors. So very similar to the earlier case, therefore, 
you can uh, you can guess what are the causes that will lead the mind to a hostile state what are the causes that can drive the mind to lustful state if you can locate and identify those causes that's that's very good that's the wisdom part of contemplation but before doing that it's like uh, you need to keep track of what is the state now that ability is the first ability to develop later on uh, before we move on uh, one word about uh, a particular mental state let's say hostile mental mental state uh, although we call it hostile inside that mind inside that state there are so many mental objects working together working together in unison uh, to give rise to this hostile state like for example uh, i mentioned about the weather earlier now to give rise to rain rainy weather uh, in that uh, previous simile if you go back to that to give rise to rainy weather although you uh, identify that as rain there are so many uh, things together to put the rain in action same way to to make the mind hostile there are so many mental objects uh, interworking within the mind uh, to get that arising hostile state those mental objects are our next topic mindfulness of the mental state which is a fourth level at the moment we are not uh, going to identify what are the mental state uh, what are the mental objects in within the mental state we just want to name the mental state in a very simple manner like this for example suppose you consider uh, if i give an equivalent if you consider a curry so there there is a certain taste right when you taste uh, the a dish there is a certain taste which dominate for example you might notice immediately the salt is dominating the other taste which are mixed but you know inside the curry there are so many things together like there are vegetables and there are uh, these ingredients like uh, the well you know the five types of ingredients you put into the curry and uh, these other little little things that uh, they use for cooking all of them are there in the curry but suddenly you notice the salty taste is dominating others then you identify it as a salty curry dunu edi kela api kela but the, the, that means the, that particular taste has dominated the same way when you consider a mental state there are so many mental objects inside that some of them we will we are going to name later since we can't identify each object we will just focus our attention to identify what is the object dominating here if the hostile if the aversion is dominating we call it hostile state if the sensual desires are dominating we call it lustful state likewise so we just identify by the dominating mental object rather than trying to identify all the mental objects inside that similar to that uh, the curry rather than trying to identify every little little pieces of things that we have put into the curry uh, here the taste may be dominated by one or two of those ingredients and we just identify that that level of identification is what is required in this uh, meditation of the mindfulness of the mind okay. hope uh, it is more clear with that little analogy okay so the mental states uh, if i put them back they are like this some more states to discuss here Uh, some more to discuss but these things i think uh, your knowledge should be good enough by now okay. okay so then uh, meditation goes this way for ordinary states so higher states uh, altogether eight uh, 
like earlier, the very first state is becoming mindful about internal plus external. That level is called the bare mindfulness on the mental state. Just the no name, just identification, what is there. After that, ability to identify arising and passing away of each mental state. After that, ability to identify arising with the knowledge of the causes. Ability to identify passing away with full knowledge of the causes to pass away. So, like that. Okay. So by now, I think you would have realized the similarity of these uh, meditations, mindfulness meditations. They are all putting, they are all uh, being done in a particular pattern. Once you identify the pattern, you can apply that to anything like body, feelings, mind, or mental uh, objects. So here, uh, if I add one more word here, Mental state is a, a summary device to identify uh, mental elements which are there. The dominating mental element or mental object is used to identify the mental state. That is the idea. Uh, today, uh, all of you are very silent. Uh, Unlike the other days where you throw some questions today, I don't see much questions. Yeah. Well, uh, contemplation two states, I already explained. First, uh, arising and passing away, you closely observe. Then uh, observe them with the, with the understanding of but causes that uh, arising. What about the causes of a mental state? The nearest cause is that uh, the mind and the matter are put together. Right? Mind uh, is not matter, you know. Matter is the, the physical part of the body. So mind and matter, when they put together, a mental state will result. So closest uh, or the nearest cause is mind plus matter, mind over matter, driven by uh, your decision, driven by your decision. Uh, for example, uh, if the aversion dominates, it's due to a previous decision taken by the mind, that is a volition. And volitions don't happen automatically. They are driven by the motive factors in the mind, such as, uh, such as craving, uh, such as ignorance, and some more are there. So that's that level, the lower level. Driving factors for this decision. Based on that decision, the mind will be over, mind will be over matter to generate uh, a particular mental state. For example, when you hear something, there is this matter part, which is the, which is the ear, uh, the biological part of the ear. The mind part is that the consciousness is directly coupled to that place. So when the mind and the matter combine there, uh, this men new mental state based on that sound will appear. So that's how you need to identify. So like earlier, three levels. Ignorance and craving, they go into the driving forces within the mind for this decision. And that decision puts the mind plus matter together to give rise of a new mental state. So this uh, monitoring ability, monitoring ability of this state machine called the mind is what we develop in this uh, meditation. And you know, uh, I think I already mentioned that if you want to call yourself having a developed mind, your mind should be capable of capable of fully comprehending its own process. If a mind can comprehend its own internal process, uh, 
uh, state changes, then only you can call it a fully developed mind. No matter how many external processes you can uh, comprehend, for example, in electronics, you might comprehend an external uh, uh, process like, uh, say, a transistor, how is it working? What happens to the currents? What happens to the voltages? And any other gadget, engineering gadget, they are all external processes, very simple. So comprehending those is, of course, good enough. I mean, mind is fairly developed, but not fully developed. Fully developed means the mind should be able to comprehend its own process. Then only your mental development is complete. Otherwise, it's incomplete. And uh, that's how meditators think. So absence of any of these will uh, make this mental state to vanish. So if the mind plus matter combination vanish, mental state will uh, not prevail anymore. If the volition, power of that volition is over, a new volition took over, previous mental volition will uh, fall apart. If the driving forces are absent, again the mental state will fall apart. So this is the rising and uh, falling apart of a mental state that also you can put into a summary like this. Mental state arises due to this. And when these causes are absent, mental state will uh, fall apart, giving way to a new mental state, which will come up in a similar manner. And these causes are not personal actually. In the same process, uh, mental states uh, appear in others' minds. For example, hostile mental state may appear in someone else's mind using the same process. Right? Therefore, this is a universal thing, not personal. You just identify, okay, there are things called mental states and uh, due to this natural uh, process uh, called dependent co-arising, mental states arise and mental states uh, die down in anyone's mind. Therefore, it's uh, that process is part of the nature. Process is natural. That's how the nature works. That is the way the meditator understands, should understand it. So uh, before the break, uh, no, we'll have the break now. After that, I'll highlight the steps we need to follow in this meditation. After that, uh, at 11.45 uh, to 12.15, sorry, 11.15 to 11.45, we will uh, do the meditation there. Okay, uh, we'll stop this session now, have the break. <laughs> 